welcome back. All right, so the Coyotes, right? So yeah, news of the day, all that other wonderful stuff. And the Coyotes made big news yesterday when I was going to the Canucks game. And this morning, that news has gotten a lot brighter if you're an Arizona fan. You do not have to worry about them getting locked out of their building. I shouldn't have got to this point, should it? So this is this is where I'm at with the Arizona Coyotes. You know, I, I, I want to see the team succeed. I, I want to see them turn it around. I want to see them figure it out, get themselves that building in Tempe. But if I'm making the decision right now in Tempe, if I'm looking at all of this, I might say, you know, I, I don't know. Like, do we do we want to go through all this? So the Arizona Department of Revenue filed a tax lien notice on December 3rd. I have a hard time believing that, that the team didn't know that was there. So uh, the, the team is blaming human error for all of this. But again, this is not... This is not something that just happened last week. It's not something that that Bill in accounting uh, forgot to pass. It doesn't sound. It doesn't sound like something that should be able to do that. Uh, so they had 1.3 million in unpaid city and state taxes, and again, that's kind of a, a large number. Uh, it's the kind of number that any of the rest of us that haven't paid that, we're we're not just getting a notice. <laughs> uh, we're we're getting more than a notice if we owe 1.3 million in taxes, right? So the team said basically their answer was, whoops, we'll pay that tomorrow. Sorry, we had no idea. But again, just just in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how do, how do they not know until it becomes public? And until somebody says, you know what, we'll lock you out of your building. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, the 1.3 million. It's just under the couch. It's just this where you put your 1.3 million. I, I just have a hard time believing it. And, and this is a team that was previously late paying bonuses. What did they say when they were late paying their bonuses? Uh, there was a procedural error. Whoops. So they've been late paying things before. And Alex Marwello, a guy who has a lot of money, he's worth a lot of money. And this really shouldn't be a thing. There was the eviction notice on August 19th video on the channel on that, right? They're evicted from their building. They still don't technically have one for next year. And Craig Morgan reporting that they could use, I think, Phoenix Veterans Memorial Coliseum, which is not an NHL level building, but maybe they can use that for a couple years. But the Tempe thing still hasn't been fully approved yet. So until the Tempe thing is fully approved and they're having deals with the airport about that, and whether, whether you believe that it's all saber rattling or whatever, the thing is, when the eviction notice was given in August, there was a belief that, well, this is the city just trying to bully the Arizona Coyotes, and but they've stuck to it. They're not wavering on this. They've said they've reached the point of no return. And then, of course, there was the dysfunctional organization discussion in February, on February 16th, of how this organization is, is not run in a particularly sensical manner. And there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, discontent within the Arizona Coyotes organization. This has to bother Gary Bettman. This has to bother other owners. This has to bother them on some level. Because if this, this team is in a building that's not Gila River, you'd have to think that, that Phoenix Veterans Memorial would generate less revenue for the team in all likelihood. And it's it's not going to be an NHL level building. It's just, and then for how long, right? The longer the Tempe thing takes, and these these kinds of things can get caught in red tape for a long time. Look at Calgary, a city where they know they need a new building. People seem to agree they need a new building, and they're waiting. So Arizona, where it would not be as as top of everyone's mind as it's going to be in Calgary, it's likely going to take longer. So. The taxes and bills are now paid. The Arizona Coyotes doing it. My guess is the public embarrassment at the idea that they get locked out of their building got them to go, oh, we found it. Found the money. Here it is. Uh, but this is a team that does lose a lot of money. They've lost money every year. And it just, it doesn't look good. And I would think the city of Tempe would see this and they'd say, well, this just, this, this just doesn't look good. The last thing the city of Tempe wants to do is is a proof of a, a very expensive development like this and then end up going through the same situations that the city of Glendale are dealing with. So yeah, we'll see what's up next for the Coyotes. Again, the, the whole thing with the Tempe building seems to be months away from being resolved and being approved and all that. And... 
I, I thought the oddest part was the, the, the Phoenix airport saying we'd like to see the blueprints for the new building you guys are putting up because it could be right near the airport and we want to take a look in Arizona going, no, nah. that's, that's the weirdest part of the whole thing is the, no, nah. no, we're not, we're not going to show you that. All right. So yeah, um, an adversary relationship begins there and, uh, yeah, so there, that's where we're at with the coyotes. Welcome to the latest editions of the edition of as the coyotes turn. So, and, and they're not turning into Houston for anybody who's going to say as the Coyotes turn into Houston. I, I yeah, okay, but touche, but at this point, no. Uh, so, news about the Canucks, and I got to be honest, I, I think this, this sounds like it's the right thing, depending on what he's doing. So, Jim Rutherford is headed to Vancouver in all likelihood. Darren Drager saying that that's ramped up. Jim Rutherford's probably going to be uh, getting into an agreement with the Canucks. I mentioned this with the coach and why they brought in Bruce Boudreaux. They can't really afford to bring in somebody who hasn't done the job before. That's what they did with Jim Benning. Uh, Travis Green hadn't coached at the NHL level before. If they bring in somebody brand new with new ideas, sure, that could work. Uh, Gillis, it was his first job too. They want an experienced hockey mind in charge. So Rutherford, I would think, to me, it sounds like team president would likely be the role for Jim Rutherford, not general manager. So there's there's going to be a change in how the Canucks do things, and having a team president and a general manager would be a start. And so I would think Rutherford would come in as team president. That's my guess. Uh, Rutherford, I still think he could do a good job. I know that there are people who complain about Rutherford, but honestly... There's no GM out there who's available that's worked in the NHL before that we could not find a problem with. And no brand new mind coming in to run things as GM that people wouldn't say, wow, who's this guy? What are the Canucks thinking? They need somebody who knows what they're doing. So uh, I, I don't think there's going to be a decision made on on who's going to run things that would make everybody happy. Uh, the, the Mike Gillis thing that gets floated out there by Canuck fans, I would not be happy with Gillis coming back as general manager it, at all. Uh, and I mean, I would be, you know, cautiously hopeful and thinking, please let this work out. But I, I, that would not, that would not be a, a choice that I would, I would personally make if, if, if I had any say, which I don't, uh, rightfully so. I do not have a say in this, but Rutherford, I think could bring, you know, that knowledge to the team and it's just about finding the right people, right? So, uh, we'll see whether or not Rutherford ends up being team president or what he ends up doing, but it sounds like it could happen today. Uh, the Canucks, you know, the, they're going to say publicly they're going to take their time and due diligence and everything, but there's pressure locally, right? And they know they they want to right the ship. And maybe, just maybe, with the Canucks winning those first two games under Bruce Boudreaux, it gives this impression of, hey, maybe, maybe we can turn it around this season and make some noise this season. And maybe looking at the Pacific Division, they're saying, yeah, this, this is a division we could very well reach the top three and by the end of the season if we do things right. I don't necessarily agree with that, but again, not my call. <clears throat> Ian Cole was fined yesterday $5,000 for kneeing Shifley. I would have done the video last night, but I was on my way to Vancouver. Ended up being an hour and a half to get in there, too. Uh, the, the traffic was awful. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the kneeing fine, and there's some debate about why this was a fine, and then the, the, the one from Pionk was, was a suspension and all that wonderful stuff, because that's how that works. Uh, the NHLPA has appealed Spetz's suspension. Now, it has to go to Gary Bettman first, then it goes to an arbitrator. I don't think anybody's feeling like Spetz is going to have it drawn back, right? Because Bettman's not going to overrule Department of Player Safety. He doesn't want that out there, right? Publicly, he'll support it, even if privately he doesn't agree. He'll Publicly, he has to support it. But by the time it gets to the independent arbitrator... Toronto will likely have played most of those six games. They've already played one. They play the second one tonight, right? But Spezza then would get some money back if, in the in the case that the appeal drops it down to, say, four games, even if they've played six, he has to get paid for those other two. He's losing. He's only losing $21,000 in those six games that he has, he's not going to play. But, again, the unions appealed it. And it's interesting because this is the first one we've seen the NHLPA appeal this year. So... Uh, I, I guess they just don't agree with Spets of getting that suspension. And and so we'll see what happens if an independent arbitrator says, yeah, no, we'll we'll drop that or what happens. Uh, Jake Gensel is out for the Pittsburgh Penguins week to week because, of course, he is. 
Uh, as Marcus Pedersen said when they asked him about it, it's been next guy up in this locker room for the last couple of years. We're used to it. So it's an upper body injury for Gensel. And again, the Penguins roll with it. Uh, they're, they're always without some players. And so without Gensel, they're going to have to find somebody who can step into that spot where Crosby can pass him the puck and throw it in the net. And maybe it'll be Kapanen. Kapanen would be my guess. Unless he's hurt right now. With all the Penguins that get hurt, sure, maybe Kapanen. Maybe they're all hurt. Maybe Crosby's hurt right now. Maybe me talking about it. Two other Penguins will get injured because I'm talking about it. No idea. So, uh, the, the, the internet seems to have decided Rick Tockett going to Philadelphia to be head coach would make a lot of sense as their permanent coach. I will agree. I will agree that Rick Tockett is a Philadelphia Flyer. That uh, if you if you made your own Philadelphia Flyer from scratch, it would likely end up looking like Rick Tockett. If you dry it ten times over, you'd be like, it, it still looks like Rick Tockett. This one kind of looks like Bobby Clark, but if you close one eye, yeah, no, it's Rick Tockett. So, two men who do not look anything alike. But Tockett, to me, is a Philadelphia Flyer. And I know he won, you know, in Pittsburgh, and I know he went around the league a lot, and I know he's been in Arizona and L.A. and everything. He he is a Philadelphia Flyer to me, and so it would make a lot of sense if he ends up being the guy that gets that job. But we'll see what happens, right? So let me know your thoughts. If you're a Flyers fan, do you want Talkit? If you're a Canucks fan, do you want Rutherford as team president? And if you're a Coyotes fan, do you have any concern about all this stuff with the taxes and unpaid bills and them going, eh, human error? Oh, the late bonuses? That was that was a whole that was an error. That's that's accounting. As Bill in accounting. They just maybe they just have the one guy that they blame. His job is just to sit at a desk and alright, when things go wrong, it's your fault. So we're gonna blame you. No idea. Uh, let me know your thoughts. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And hey, yeah, uh, in between when I did the last news video and now, Arizona had a, a major crisis. And it's gone. So there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.